Hey guys and gals, Never here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's something about Twitter, the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Chord Progressions. So yeah, I'm going to save the Patreon stuff for the end of the video, so let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Gotta have something to take the spot, since Soul Creek is currently over with for now. Alright. The fact that she's still here, living, breathing, and talking to us is nothing short of a miracle. I'm so proud to call her my best friend. Mariah looks at April expectantly, but April's expression was completely void of interest. Um, don't you have anything to um, don't you have anything to say about this bombshell I just dropped on you? Mariah let out a chuckle. No, you're my girl now. Oh, that's all that matters. Why would I give a shit if you two bumped butts ten years ago? Another another snicker left Mariah's lips at the remark. Okay, listen, we did not bump any but. Oh my god, literally, I don't give a shit, dude. We don't have time to take a trip down memory lane. We have to go now. Ugh, if I were allowed to change one thing about April, it would be her tendency to interrupt me. God, I hate that. Yeah, yeah, fine. I'm ready when you are. April gives Mariah a quick kiss on the lips. Cute. April. Love you. I'll call you on my break. Love you too, dear. Drive safe. I don't know what I'd do without Mo. There's not another soul out there like her. I'm in my never-ending quest to make my best friend laugh and smile. I feel a strong urge to act out in a silly way. Bye, Mo. I also love you. I shout to her in a jovial tone. April buries her face in both her paws and paces to the front door. Mariah just giggles. Love you too, you goof. Please don't drive my girlfriend crazy today. No promises. I follow after April to the door. Time to go. That's pretty. I did it. I chugged the whole thing in less than ten minutes. I'm caffeinated, motivated, and ready for whatever this day has in store for me. Don't fucking say that! The ride's mostly quiet, while April's focused on driving, my mind's a buzz thinking to myself about all the possible scenarios I could play out today. Some more realistic than others. What if the work is super hard and I end up not liking it? But what if they're all assholes and I can't get along with anybody? I must consider everything, especially since I'm finding myself in unfamiliar territory with this new job. Yeah, I've worked retail for years, but I've never worked in a music store. Don't get me wrong, I love music. I enjoy the, uh, I'll especially enjoy the occasional shower or driver's seat karaoke experience while jamming to my favorite tunes. I'm almost certainly horrid at singing, but I can't. But uh, can't a fox judge himself in his pop star fantasies every once in a while? Indulge himself, okay. Aside from the awful vocals, I'm not a musician in any way. It's unclear why Chester chose me for his team. Since he's going to be my new boss, I imagine I'll be spending a good amount of time with him today. Maybe I can pick his brain about it. April slows the car down and enters a turn lane, followed by a right turn. It's like we're here. We turn off the main road into a sizable parking lot with a large, a large building situated at the back. Ugh, there you go. Oh, I do require caffeination. <clears throat> it's a lot bigger than I expected for a music shop. We pull closer and I catch a view of the vinyl graphic overlaid on a large window out front. Chronicles Music Retail, Cafe and Venue. When I first heard April describe this place, it all sounded a bit strange. The joint sells instruments, it's a, it's a music venue for live concerts and serves coffee? Conceivably, a music retailer and a music venue would work together harmoniously as a single business unit, but to also throw a cafe into the mix? Seems a bit overkill to me. April pulls her car into a section of the parking lot that's located off to the side. She parks she's, She parks next to three other cars. One's an old luxury car. Next to it is a newish economy crossover. Next to that is a spot as a sporty sedan. Not quite a street racing car, but certainly not cheap. She parks and takes the keys out of the ignition. Looks like the whole gang's here today. Those are all Chester's name and Pat's cars. Oh, okay. Is that our whole team? That's a squad. If you didn't remember, Chester's the boss. Dave is Chester's husband. He runs the cafe. And Pat works the same position we do, but he helps a lot in the cafe nowadays. Wait, Chester is a husband? I didn't know that. Yeah, dude. People are gay sometimes. You of all people should know that. She quips with a monotone with a slight hint of snark. I've already had it up to here with her, and it's not even 8 a.m. Well, I get that, but I wasn't expecting him to be gay too, you know. Just yanking your chain, dude. Lighten up a little. I don't really enjoy this type of yanking, but whatever. But for real, though, he, uh, he and his husband are kind of like pillars of the local LGBT plus community. They help organize and fundraise for pride events and stuff. He also likes to hire young queer people like us when he can. Hmm, interesting. Is that legal? At the very least, it's ethically questionable. We exit the car and I follow behind April. She leads me behind the building to a door situated next to a few dumpsters. This must be our employee entrance. That's, not, that's a nice break room. The room we enter seems to be an employee break room and storage room. 
April walks in and makes a beeline to an electric module located on the opposite wall. Which is like an electronic time clock device. She punches in a sequence of numbers and places her index digit on the scanner. The module's screen glows a bright green. Two minutes to spare? I like clocking in earlier than that. Keep that in mind. Her tone is stern as she scolds me. Why can't she cut me a little slack here? Let's go find Chester. She walks, to, she walks toward the door that leads out of the break room into the next room and I follow suit. Connecting the rooms was a two-way swinging door, equipped with plastic sanitary seals that scraped against the floor and ceiling as it opened. When I stepped through that door, I could have sworn I'd die and found myself in sweet, sweet confectionery heaven. That sanitary seal does a brilliant job of preventing air exchange because I couldn't smell a thing until now. All around me was the smell of sweet pastries baking in hot ovens accompanied by the comforting scent of freshly brewed coffee. It was at this moment I was starkly reminded that I didn't have breakfast. This must be the prep kitchen. The area is kept very tidy and pristine. Every stainless steel surface shone brilliantly. It was then that my attention was drawn to the two individuals responsible for these wonderful aromas dancing happily in my nostrils. A skunk and a collie. One second, y'all. The skunk is quite a large man. I stand at average height, and he's a few inches taller, perhaps six foot two. He's quite plump and very pleasantly so. Charmingly handsome as well. And next to him stands a border collie who's in the process of icing pastries on an adjacent counter. What a jimmy is, too. He stands a bit shorter than me and is sporting a fit frame. Trim figures like his are also a, also a treat. I'm a greedy omnivore when it comes to my tastes in men's bodies. Not only do I enjoy a variety of body types, I want to sample them all. I wonder if either would let me sample... Wait, 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 fucking stop! What am I doing? I haven't even talked to these guys yet, and I'm already having wild fantasies about them. What the hell's wrong with me? Oh, wait, I know exactly what's wrong with me. I haven't gotten it, gotten off at all this past week during the move. I'm in serious trouble unless I can get a grip. Unless I can get a grip. <laughs> well, well, here's a new guy. The skunk turned towards me and set down the bowl and rubber spatula he was holding. A wide and warm grin spread across his face. Ooh, April, you found me another cute one, didn't you? The collie speaks out while icing a tray of pastries. He's still facing the tray of carb-loaded delights, only while uh, only offering me an April side glance as he continues to his, continues his task. Wait, me? He's calling me cute? April implied that some of my co-workers were going to be queer, but I didn't expect one to start shamelessly flirting with me the instant I walked through the door. I looked to April to try to find some sort of reassurance here. All she did was roll her eyes at the collie's comment. Was this... Was this happening? Ha have I gone to the wrong place? Am I being pranked? Where are the hidden cameras? That'd be nice. Chester was clear about his stance on you being flirty with our new friend here. The skunk's tone was very firm but positive. It was like a teacher trying to positively reinforce good behavior in a student. I know, I know. I'm just messing. How's it going, man? Hey, I'm good. Excited to be here. I give Pat a wave, giving getting a good look at his face. He's quite a handsome dog. Someone as attractive as him is really calling me cute? Was this a joke? That'd be a great punchline, wouldn't it? Tease me to try to get my hopes up. This was always a shitty game the bullies would play on the queer kids in high school. Happy to hear it, bud. I'm Dave, and this goofball over here is Pat. It's great to finally meet you. Welcome to the family. He exclaimed this one, he exclaimed this one making his smile even wider and warmer. Dave approaches me. I was prepared to shake his paw, but it looks like he wants more than that. His arms are spread wide open. Come here, buddy. I'm a hugger. Oh shit. This gorgeous tall man is gonna bury me in his soft, warm bosom. Lord help me! I'm expecting a bit of a casual hug. Quick, less than two seconds. We all go about our day. Uh, Dave is on a completely different page, though. I open my arms hesitantly, and Dave pulls me into one of the most intimate and tight hugs I've ever experienced. Certainly the most intimate embrace I've ever shared with a stranger. He holds me tight with a vice-like grip with my face buried in his chest. God, his chest is so soft. It has so much cushion and fluff. Hmm. It gently rocks me back and forth and gives my back some slow and gentle rubs. He's a very active hugger, isn't he? Holy fuck, I need to get out of this hug quick before I start poking him. I make the executive decision to terminate the embrace with a gentle yet assertive pull. Um, cool. Thanks, Dave. I mutter sheepishly. It's at this point I'm starting to feel overwhelmed. Regardless of my pent-up predicament, Dave is being a lot in this moment. He seems to have gotten the message and lets out a chuckle. Sorry, bud. Chester tells me I need to work on asking before I just go up and hug on fellas. I'll be more mindful next time. It's okay. It just surprised me is all. I just never had my coworkers act so friendly towards me on the first day. Well, this ain't no ordinary place of work. You'll find that Chester is going to take real good care of you. 
Ain't that right? He glances over at Pat to coax out a response. Pat is still diligently attending to his icing. He's definitely the best boss I've ever had, that's for sure. His response seems quite natural and not forced. He's not trying to flatter because the boss's husband has asked the question. And Pat sets down his icing bag and turns toward me entirely, offering me his undivided attention. I think you're going to have a good time here. Pat extends his right paw for a shake, and I oblige. His grip is gentle yet firm. Nice to meet you, dude. I'm not much of a hugger myself. If I was going to hug you, I'd be liable to nip your neck. He sneered, staring directly into my eyes with a coy smile and a smirk. Oh, jeez, he's flirting. is definitely having an effect on me. I feel butterflies in my stomach, and my head starts to spin and swim. With that, my heart flutters. I see his brows raise. He lets out the quietest chuckle, just barely loud enough for me to hear. Fuck, he smelled that, didn't he? The worker lupine breed always have an acute sense of smell. He can certainly smell hormones and pheromones at paw shake distance, a little adrenaline rush being no exception. I really have to be wary around this one. I do my best to collect myself. Um, yeah, uh, good to meet you too, Pat. We mutually broke our paw shake, but turned back to April. She's looking at me with a slight smirk on her face. She could have warned me about these two. Chester's over in his office. I'll take you to him if you're ready. He turns to April. You good with the opening the front house while we get them all set up, ape? apes? Apes? First time I've heard that nickname for her. Mariah's never used it. Apes. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, I'll be good. She says this with a satisfied grin on her face and a thumbs up. She walks through the kitchen doors. Dave and I are close behind after, after he signals for me to follow. The door leads to the area behind the counter of the cafe. I wasn't quite sure what to expect from the cafe. This is legit. We walk around the counter and find several tables and chairs in the dining area. It's quite spacious with plenty of seating. It's like the kitchen, the space was spotless. The tile floors are practically glowing. All the tables and chairs are neat, very neatly arranged for the, for the ready for the customers. One thing I found curious was that the cafe seems to be entirely enclosed. Walls completely surrounded only the restaurant. It was almost like a cafe you would find in a mall, perhaps. There's one door that seems to exit outside, another that exits into the front of the house, as Dave called it. With each successive room I've toured so far, I've become more and more impressed. It helps put my mind at ease despite all the tension I've endured so far. We spoke as we continued to walk. Here's the cafe. We got coffee, pastries, and some lunch sandwiches for sale. It's open from 9 to 4 every day that shop's open. We'll see about getting you back here during lunchtime so you can see how everything flows. Sure, sounds good. With me in tow, Dave guides me through the cafe's main seating area into the front doors. <laughs> The bell situated above the door chimes, signaling a person has either entered or exited. Separate from the enclosed cafe space, we venture out to the music store, which is huge. Oop. I forgot that. Okay. The instruments lined the perimeter walls of the showroom. Many were displayed up high and out of reach. Guitars, bass instruments, brass instruments, okay. Woodwind instruments, and anything else you could think of. In the center of the large space are clusters of electronic keyboards, drums, and even a couple of pianos. Along one of the back walls, a cluster of shelves housed several records, all neatly organized. Every product in sight was kept in immaculate condition. The light trickling in through the windows of the shop shined brilliantly on every surface. The floors in this space are carpeted, but also kept pristine like just like the cafe. I'm also finding an eclectic set of furniture peppered throughout the shop. They range from small bar stools to big comfy couches. Lots of places to park your ass while you sample the merchandise, I guess. As situated across the cafe's entrance is a counter space with two registers and glass display cases housing smaller merchandise. Alright y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Kate Silverman. Thank you for going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye